Good evening, everyone. I have a need. A need for a bench. Luckily, I happen to have a lot of spare walnut lying around. On top of that need, I have a want to learn new skills. So I decided to build a mortise and tenon, let's call it a, a bath time bench, um, out of some walnut that I had lying around. So this is the journey we're on. Mostly what you see me doing right now is just doing basic layout, getting measurements. I just grabbed a random piece that looked like it was going to be enough. Kind of trying to decide how big my, my mortises need to be um, first. I didn't want to put a stringer in between the two leg pieces. I kind of wanted it to just be strong enough to support on its own. A little bit of an experiment. Uh, the bench is only going to be about an overall 10 inches tall. So it wasn't going to be something that was going to have a lot of stress on it, you know, from a side-to-side -side perspective. Normally when I do these kind of layouts, I like to use this soapstone chalk. That way um, I can kind of get a rough measurement. It's really easy to see and, um, you know, obviously use. I think I use this soapstone chalk uh, pretty much every project on this channel uh, just because I like it and it reminds me a lot of seeing it around my dad's tractor shop when I was younger because they use it a lot for welding. Anyway, so just roughing out the dimensions of the of the stool. You notice all my cuts are a little long. Um, that way if I'm off a little bit, I can kind of refine it like I'm doing here. Um, and that's kind of the basic, what I want the, the, the bench to look like. Just rough dimensions. Still trying to formulating, you know, still trying to formulate what what exactly I'm going to do. I've got it in my head. I've just got to make it physical at this point. Right now, I'm kind of grading the fronts and matching them up, so I know which is my A leg, which is my B leg, which side needs to be up. There's some big defects in the lumber, and I'm not super concerned about them. I'm gonna just kind of work with them. This is certainly not a showpiece. Uh, it's just a bench that we put in front of our bathtub. That way, uh, when our daughter is bathing, we can kind of sit there with her. Right now, we're just kind of like sitting way too low, or we're sitting on our knees, and that's very uncomfortable. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm taking all the shavings and, and storing them for later use, as you'll see. I don't have a woodworking bench. I just have a, a project bench. So when I'm doing... A lot of um, surface planing uh, by hand I'll often just put in these little, little support calls to, to force my board to stay into place that makes surface planing by hand a lot easier maybe someday we'll build a woodworking bench with you know bench dog holes and hold fast and things like that I just don't have that now I do what I can um, making little clamps um, that way I can get a full surface uh, while I'm um, while I'm planing, most of this um, was just a super rough lumber, just trying to plane it down to get it close to smooth and close to the dimensions I'm looking for. I wanted to show here after I plane for a while, I stop and um, just resharpen all my my tools. I think I I show that in a couple different avenues here, but um, mostly. After doing a lot of the, the roughing, I just want to go back and, and refine my plain iron a little bit better. And so my method is really simple. Um, I've got a little um, jig I use for measurements to get me the right angles. And then I run it on a like a 300 grit um, coarse um, diamond stone and then I flip it over to a thousand. And that's usually enough for me. There's certainly, you can get a lot a lot more psychotic about sharpening. But for me, I just need some functionally sharp, easy to use tools. And that's sort of my, my methodology here. Um, and, and really, it takes about like 15 minutes or, or less to get back to a really sharp blade. Now you see here, I've switched to um, my number five hand plane. And that's where I'm really going to start to dimension this lumber and get it flat. There was a pretty big um, protrusion, I guess we'll say. In, uh, in the lumber here where there was a bunch of knots and things. And so 
I had to work on that quite a bit to get it nice and flat. The underside I'm not super worried about. It's really just want the, um, the top side to look nice and be smooth. And so just kind of checking it as I, as I go along for flatness, as you'll see there. So then flip the board over and it's back to a rough side. So then I need to knock that down. And again, underside for this particular piece is not super important. It's not a perfect board. It's not going to look perfect. It's, it's just something functional um, that's going to look pretty. And um, that's that's really all I'm looking for here. And to learn, you know, to, to do a mortise and tenon. I've never really done one like this before. So something I've always wanted to try. And here I'm just taking the edge down. Right now when you work with rough cut lumber, you've got to get it smooth and really using a hand plane is, is a good way to go. Um, kind of, I start with that, um, that orange handled um, plane to get it get kind of rough down and then I switch back to my number five to get it nice and smooth and refined. I didn't make a ton of measurements to get a size. I was just kind of going by feel more than anything and then, and then coming back and, and refining the edges a little bit more. Uh, I planed for a good long time, did this project over about a week and a half, just kind of working a few minutes here, a few minutes there. Planing is hard work, and uh, you got to take a break every once in a while. So now that the board's close to dimensionally what I want, the next phase is to actually do some proper marking, and with that I'm going to use a pencil. There's some variations in the width of these boards, the legs, the top, and I wasn't really too worried about getting them perfect. I could have ran them through a, a thickness planer, but I wasn't going to do that. So I'm I'm using the marking on each leg to get my to to get my dimensions for the mortise and tenon, and you'll kind of just see I'm finding a center first, and then from there, I kind of experiment for how big I want the, the mortise and tenon to be. So originally you can see I kind of went for like about an inch and a half by an inch and a half and I just didn't feel like that would be strong enough without having a stringer. So I doubled that. And I think it's a little over, it's around three inches is what the mortise is that I'm gonna cut in here. And you'll see I'm, I'm using a Forstner bit there which is an amazing drill bit. I'm gonna hog out most of the material with the the Forstner bit because I'm trying to save my my <laughs> my chisel work uh, for later and kind of just testing I definitely don't want to blow out my lines um, but I want to get it you know pretty close to, to right and this is far from perfect definitely a, a huge learning experience here uh, made a lot of mistakes but I thoroughly enjoyed it now what you don't see here on, off screen, I just have a bucket underneath my bench that I dump all my shavings into to use for filler. There's a million different reasons to, to keep those. Um, they start fires really, really easy, which is nice if you've got a fire pit. So now we go to the chisel work and I'm just using a, um, a wooden mallet I made and you know some fairly run of the mill Stanley chisels that I have. I definitely feel like after um, after using my chisels quite a bit here, that investing in a good set of chisels with um, really, really good iron will help out because that walnut um, definitely tended to dent up the, um, the, the tip of the chisel quite a bit, so I had to spend a lot of time sharpening in between. Here I'm using a marking gauge to get my thickness um, for, the, for the tenon I'm about to cut. And you kind of see there's a little burr on the edge of that and just gives you a nice refined line. And I, I made it a little proud. I wanted to wanted the tenon to stick up a little bit and then I would sand it or plane it down flat. And then just using my pull saw here to um, to cut those the bulk of the material out and then back to chiseling to uh, to refine the edges. And there's a lot I don't show in here. It's you know sort of boring and tedious work. Um, had a major blowout and I just wanted to show really simply it's easy to fix this was on the underside luckily so I just I found the chip that was on the ground grabbed some glue um, threw a little tight bond number one on there clamp it down for a couple hours go back to work and 
you know, after sanding and, you know, refining a little bit more, you barely even notice that that's there. It's important to find the chip. Um, if you don't, you're going to create some more work for yourself. So now it's going to be getting closer to finish sanding. So the first thing is I, I just throw a pencil line on there. That way I can get a nice even sanding across the board. Now I'm starting with an 80 grit here, a little bit more aggressive um, to get out some of the lines and some of the, the markings on it. And then um, I switch and I just go up the grits. I think I stopped on... Um, I think I stopped on like 220 or 2 something on my sanding. And here I'm taking down the, the really sharp 90 degree edge. I just um, run the edge with um, a little low angle block plane and then a little piece of um, 220 grit sandpaper that gives it a little bit of a slight round over and just makes it feel more refined in your, in your hand and a little bit softer. So I do that on all six sides on all three pieces, so the legs and the top. And it takes just a few seconds, but well worth doing it. And um, there's a few, there's like a divot there, as you can see. I'm just smoothing that over and making it a little nicer to the touch. And then I switch to hand sanding for the higher grits. For me personally, it's just the way I like to do it. It's not as fast, but it's a little bit more in control. So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna seat the legs and I'm just getting a nice thorough um, layer of glue across all the edges and then you know I bang it in and then um, in here there's a little bit of gapping because you know I'm uh, learning this process so I want to fill in those gaps and make sure there's quite a bit of glue I want this to be super strong and last for a long time so I over glue a little bit here and, and, and I knew I was being a little generous with my glue but I wanted to get as much glue in the cracks as possible and then to fill in a little bit of um, spacing there so as you've seen me do this before, I just save a bunch of shavings and uh, dust and then rub that into the glue. Um, that way it's all walnut throughout there and there's no like sort of different colored wood or different species wood. I have a jar just full of walnut shavings and I, I try not to waste anything. And then from there I just sand it away. Um, and then for the tenons, they did stick up a little bit. So I just went back to the plane and took the edge down a little bit, back to sanding, and um, sanded some more. A lot of sanding, but wanted a, a pretty good deal. And you can see, there's the, the walnut um, bench after putting the legs on and doing my finished sanding. And the next thing I'm gonna do is seal it in with a little bit of Danish oil. I've never used Danish oil before, but I love the results. It really makes the walnut turn from sort of this after sanding, it, it has no life to it. It's just kind of this bland looking board and then boom, that's during the drying process and uh, it's still very shiny. And then the next shot, it, you're gonna see, this is the usage of it. So we have a clawfoot bathtub and just a little place for us to sit and have bath time with our daughter. Thank you, have a great night.